Howdy everyone, Dead here. I'm here to teach you how to do the Valent Disciple raid as fast as possible. Let's go. As soon as you load into the raid, you're hitting the ground running. There'll be an illusion of Savathun that spawns. Go ahead and clear her out and I'll despawn all the adds in the area. And follow this path to the first semi-encounter, the payload. Welcome to the payload. For this semi-encounter, you'll need to escort and defend the payload all the way to the end while defending it from waves of oncoming scorn from checkpoint to checkpoint. The high priority targets you'll need to take care of are the knowledge bearers. These guys while alive will give you stacks of pervading darkness. If this hits times 10, you'll die. So just go ahead and clear out the area. Once the knowledge bearers are taken care of, there'll be shards of knowledge scattered all across the area. You need to pick these up and deposit them in the payload. The max stack you can hold on to is 3. You'll know when you have 3 when you have overflowing knowledge. And to deposit them, you just need to stay on top of the payload for a couple seconds. Once once all the knowledge has been deposited, you'll continue on to the next checkpoint. You'll have a total of 6 checkpoints where you'll need to rinse and repeat this entire process. Once you hit the end, follow this path to the first real encounter, the Acquisition. Welcome to the Acquisition. This encounter will teach you the major mechanics for the rest of the raid. You'll need to split your team off into three teams of two. On each team, you'll need one defender and one runner. And the teams will be located at one of the obelisks in the arena. There'll be one in middle, one on left, and one on right. With the start encounter, you'll shoot the crystal in the middle. Once this happens, ads will start pouring into the room. And mixed in with those ads, there'll be special ads known as abated adherents. These guys' sole purpose is to shoot the obelisk. When these guys shoot the obelisk, it fills with darkness energy. If it fills to the top, it's instant white. You'll also get a notification in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen saying that an obelisk is under attack if these guys are shooting at it. Once you clear out all the enemies, one of the team's reference boards will get their first symbol. This top symbol will tell you where you need to take care of a taken knight, or it'll be on pyramid side or traveler side. The arena split up perfectly down the middle. Left side be in Pyramid and right side be in Traveler. You'll need your runners to run around searching for this Taken Knight. Once the compass is taken out, whatever team had that first symbol will have their reference board updated with another symbol. The second symbol will tell the runners which door they'll need to run into, and each team will have three doors assigned to their area. Spawn will have Praise, Gift, and Enter. Left side will have Grief, Stop, and Brain, and right side will have Drink, Commune, and Kill. Once your runner finds the correct door, if the door is not open, shoot the crystal in the middle to open it. This will switch the open and closed doors. So the doors that were open before are now closed, and the closed doors are now open. Once the runner runs inside, the reference board will be updated with your final symbol. This final symbol will tell you which scorn captain the runner will need to kill inside, whether it be light or dark. Inside of each room, there is something to signify which scorn will be light and which one will be dark. All the runner needs to do is kill the one with the correct alignment to go ahead and get your sigil. You'll need to remember the sigil for later. And while all this is going on, other reference boards will be updated and unstoppable abominations will also spawn. And you'll need three sigils to go ahead and complete the next step. Once you have all three sigils, go ahead and clear out the rest of the ads. It's time to make an offering to your obelisk. What you'll need to do is find the obelisk that has all three sigils. Whatever team has all three sigils on their obelisk, what you'll need to do is shoot these three sigils as fast as you can. If any of the other teams shoot in one of their obelisks that doesn't have all three sigils, it'll reject your offering. If you get roughly three or four rejections, it's an instant wipe. Once you shoot all three of your sigils on your obelisk, your obelisk will accept your offering, starting the process all over again. You'll need to do this a total of three times. To make things a little easier, here's a map of the arena and a reference guide with all the symbols you'll need to remember. Once you finish your final offering, you can get your loot. Now follow this path to get to the next encounter, the Caretaker. A triumvirate. Opportunity. Preservation. Salvation. It will serve the deserving. Crush the defiant. Welcome to the Caretaker. For this encounter, you'll need to split your team up into three teams of two, and each team will have one job. The jobs are Stun, 
add control, and runners. The starters encounter shoot one of the crystals in the back of the room. Once this happens, the caretaker and ads will start spawning into the room, and the back door will open. At this time, one of the runners needs to run into that open door and start picking up sigils. The max amount of sigils you can hold are three, and it doesn't matter which ones you pick up, but you'll need to remember the ones that you do pick up. And while you're in this back room, you'll get stacks of pervading darkness, and if this hits times 10, you'll die, so you'll need to move fast. And the other runner's job is to make sure the door is open for when the first runner is trying to come out. So again, just shoot one of the crystals to open the door. Once the first runner comes out, the second one should immediately run in and start picking up three of their sigils. For the first runner that came out, you'll need to make an offering to the obelisk. It's just like last encounter. You'll just need to shoot the three sigils you picked up, and you'll need to do it fast. If you don't do it fast enough or shoot the wrong ones, your offering will be rejected and you'll need to pick up three more sigils. And if you get roughly three to four rejections, it's an instant wipe. Once your offering is accepted, you can open the door and rinse and repeat this process. You'll need to have three accepted offerings to start damage phase. While all this is going on, stun team will need to stun the caretaker. You'll need one person in front of the caretaker and one person behind him. The person in front will go ahead and proc a slam by getting close to him. Once the caretaker slams, its face will begin to glow. Go ahead and shoot the caretaker in the face. This will prep a stun. The person in the back will need to shoot the open coffin to go ahead and stun it. While the caretaker's stunned, it'll begin to spawn missiles. Add control and stun team will have more than enough time to take care of these missiles. Once you have three accepted offerings, it's time for damage phase. And damage plate starts wherever the caretaker was walking up. So if he's walking up from the left side, left plate will be first. And he'll go to the next one from there. During the caretaker getting in position, he'll continuously spawn missiles. You'll need to take care of these because if you don't, these things will do some serious damage to you during damage phase. Once you get a perk called Resonant Breakthrough, you'll know it's time to do some hard damage to the caretaker. You'll have roughly 5 seconds per plate to do as much damage as possible. You'll know when you need to switch plates when you see a message that says the current well begins to fade. Once you either completely drain that segmented health bar or do all 3 plates, stairs will drop down, you'll rinse and repeat this process all the way to the 4th floor. Everything stays roughly the same, but runners will have to worry about a bigger room on the 2nd floor and do some major platforming on the 3rd floor. And each floor will add an additional door that you can run in and out of. But don't worry, shooting any crystal on any side will open all doors. Once you reach the end of damage phase on the third floor, stairs will go down and you'll begin last stand. This will be your last chance to make up any lost damage from the previous three floors, and it works just the same. You have to do damage to the caretaker one plate at a time. If you don't kill the caretaker on the third plate, it's an instant wipe. Now follow this path to a cluster of transitional puzzles. Welcome to part 1 of the transitional puzzle. For this, you'll need one person to traverse across while you have the rest of the team take care of ads and shoot the crystal to make platforms to get across. Once you're across, you'll get a message that says the platforms begin to stabilize. Once this happens, the team can follow the same path to the next transitional puzzle without having to wait for platforms to adjust. Welcome to the second transitional puzzle. This one works exactly the same. Have the team stay behind, take care of the ads, and shoot the crystal while one person makes it across to the end. Once you're at the end, you'll get a message that says the platforms are stabilized and the team can follow suit. Follow this path to the third transitional puzzle. Welcome to the third transitional puzzle. This one's a little fun. Shoot the crystal so you'll have platforms going from one side to the other. What you need to do is have one person jumping on top of these things to get across. You'll need one person to shoot the crystals again to make the platforms go back the other way. This will give you more than enough time to make it to the end. And again, once it says the platforms are stabilized, the team can make it across. Now follow this path to the next encounter, the Exhibition. Welcome to the exhibition. This encounter will get pretty crazy pretty quickly, so to keep it as organized as possible, you'll need to split your team off into three teams of two. 
and each team will have one relic they'll need to worry about. One team will worry about the Darkness Splinter, one team will worry about the Aegis, and another team will worry about the Taken Blight. In room one, there'll be the Darkness Splinter. Have one person from that team pick this up. Once this happens, a Scorn and a Taken Glyph Keeper will spawn on the sides of the room, and a Taken Knight will spawn in the center. The Darkness Splinter is used to kill the Taken Knight. Killing the Taken Knight will add roughly 30 seconds to your encounter's timer. If this timer hits zero, you wipe. And the max amount of time you'll have per room is a minute 15 seconds. While this is happening, the other team should be taking care of the Glyph Keepers. Once they're down, you'll need whoever has the relic to read the Taken Phalanx's sigils and someone without a relic to read the Scorn sigils. What you need to do is call out and find the matching sigil between the two. Once you find the matching one, you'll need to shoot this sigil in front of the door. If done correctly, the door will open and you can continue on to the next room. Whoever has Darkness Plunder needs to put the relic in the podium so the teammate can pick it up. Every time you deposit a relic, you have a cooldown on before you can pick up the relic again. And someone on the Aegis team will need to pick up the Aegis on the opposite side podium. Once this happens, the door will open and you'll need to make a mad dash to breach and clear all adds across the way. Halfway up the room, the Glyph Keepers will spawn. You'll need to coordinate where the Taken Phalanx is and where the Scorn Glyph Keeper is. And again, if you have a relic, you can only read the Taken Phalanx's sigils and and if you don't have a relic, you can only read the Scorn sigils. And again, you'll be finding the matching sigils between these two. And remember them, there's an additional set of Glyph Keepers you'll need to take care of from here on out, making it four Glyph Keepers per room. If your timer is running a bit low, whoever has the Darkness Splinter can kill the Taken Knight at the end of the room. Once all the Glyph Keepers are taken care of and you have your sigils, go ahead and shoot them on the door. This will open the door where you can put down your relic in podiums. But watch out, there'll be Screams spawning at every checkpoint from here on out. And once the Taken Splinter is put down, your timer will also reset. In the third checkpoint, you'll be able to grab the Taken Relic once all the relics are in their podium. Pick up all the relics and continue on to the next room. The addition here is that the, the Taken Relic will be used to take care of Taken Shield. Just like the Last Wish Morgan encounter, you'll need to use your grenade button while up close to this little Taken Focal Point. This will destroy this point and remove all the Taken Shields from the ads nearby. And depending on where it is, you'll need to go in a zigzag pattern from there. If you're taking relics on the right, you'll be taking the left to take care of that one and going to the right side to take care of the next one, while also clearing ads along the way. You'll be rinsing and repeating this process all the way up to the final room. A quick little tip is that we found it pretty easy to have the Aegis somewhere in the middle of the room at all times. So if you ever need to cleanse, just go to the Aegis and let them know. Because the Aegis is running around trying to cleanse people, they'll go ahead and block all your bullets. And seeing as all these rooms are timed and you need to go ahead and clear all the ads along the way, it's not a good idea to have something stopping your bullets. Additionally, for every set of Glyph Keepers you take care of, there'll be a Taken Knight spawning somewhere in the middle of the rooms. To make things a little easier, here's a map of all the rooms. This map shows off all the spawn points for the Glyph Keepers, Taken Blights, and the Taken Knights. And my buddy Zenario actually updated the map to show exactly which path to take and relic we need to go to take care of taking blights, depending on which side they spawn on first. Four rooms, three and four. Once you put all the relics in their podiums in the fourth checkpoint, you're done with the encounter. Now follow this path to get to the final encounter. Rolk, Disciple of the Witness. You need to kill all the ads along the way. Welcome to Rolk. For this encounter, you need to split your team up into three teams of two, and each team will have one major role. And the roles are Laser Team, Leech Team, and Ad Control. The stars of the encounter have somebody walk up the stairs to get Rolk onto the field. Once this happens, it's a mad dash to get everyone in positions. Have somebody on the leeching team stay on the center plate with the symbol of gift. Once this happens, Rolk will spawn a giant crystal above his head. Have this person on the plate shoot this crystal. Once this happens, they'll get a buff called Leeching Force with a timer. If this timer hits zero, you'll die. So everyone needs to move fast. Immediately once this happens, have the other person on the leeching team and one person on the laser team shoot the smaller crystals that spawn in the back of the room. This will split the leeching buff to these other two players. The person on the laser team who just got leeching will need to look for Rolk. Rolk will teleport to one of three sides in the arena, whether it be middle, left, or right, and he'll shoot his lasers on that side. 
The person we're leeching on laser team needs to get hit by this blast to get emanating force. While this is going on, the other laser team and the other person on leeching team will need to shoot the crystals again to go ahead and pass leeching to the other person on laser team so they can also do the same process of getting emanating force. Once both people on the laser team have emanating force, Adclear will need to kill the cliff keepers that spawn somewhere in the arena. And just like last encounter, you'll need someone with the buff and somebody without the buff to read the sigils and find the matching one. Once you find the matching one, you'll need someone without a buff to go ahead and call out which pillar these matching sigils are on. It will be on two pillars, and you'll call these out like this. L, 1, 2, and 3, and R, 1, 2, and 3. Once you call them out, have Laser Team go ahead and dunk their emanating force at these pillars. Once they're dunked, you'll be rinsing and repeating this process two more times. You'll need to dunk three sets of emanating force to get the damage phase. Once you've dunked the final set, Rolok will invite you to his arena. As soon as you get up, Rolok will slam down and start charging at random players. After every one of these charges, Rolok will leave his glaive behind. Have one of the people on Laser Team shoot this glaive so they can get Leeching Force. Once this player has Leeching Force, you'll have to wait for Rolok to do one of his blasts so you can get emanating force. And a sigil will appear right behind Rolok. Raul. Have one of the other players call out where the person with emanating force will need the bank. So the person with the buff won't be able to see the sigils on the pillar. And the order goes like this. Traveler close left, pyramid far left, light close right, dark far right. If the person with emanating force banks at the wrong pillar, they'll die. And for every correct pillar banked at, Rolk will get a weak point. The other players will need to break this weak point. You need to break four of Rolk's weak points to start damage phase. Once this happens, Rolk will start going berserk. You'll have roughly 10 to 15 seconds to do as much damage as possible. At the end of this time, you'll need to leave the arena and you'll be starting the entire process over again. You have three damage phases to get him into final stand. Once in final stand, Rolk will go even more berserk. He'll move faster and his attacks will also do more damage, and you'll also get stacks of pervading darkness. If you don't kill him in this last stand, you'll wipe. And congratulations, you're done with Vow the Disciple. This raid guide was on the much longer side than my usual 10 minutes, but I was trying to take as much time as possible to explain every little thing that you'll need to know to complete this raid. If you feel like I did a good job, or simply I need to change things in certain ways, please let me know in the comments below. Other than that, that's it for me ladies and gentlemen. Hope you all enjoyed this raid guide. As always, I enjoy making them for you. If you like what I do and want to see more, please like and subscribe to the channel. It inspires me to make more. I'll see you on the next one. Peace, and have a good one. Bye.